So, <laughs> I know we had two title fights today. We had Brandon Moreno versus Davison Figueredo, and we had Francis Ngannou versus Sarah Gan. I know we had those two fights today, but the only fight I want to focus on today is Francis Ngannou versus Sarah Gan. Why? Because that fight was absolutely insane. That fight was absolutely insane. So starting things off, first of all, there were a few things that we were able to uh, predict. Well, for one, we predicted that Sarah Gan was going to be the more tactical guy on the feet. He was going to be the guy that was more fleet-footed. He's going to be the guy that's going to be able to move around the cage a lot better. Um, we predicted that he was going to be able to touch Francis and Gano, and he would have the defense to be able to avoid big, big shots. Was Ngano able to land in the fight? Yes, he was, but he never quite landed a clean one. He landed some solid body shots. He landed a few really good leg kicks. Um, he landed a few teeps to the body of his own, but for the most part, it was Siragon touching Francis, and he wasn't hitting him with anything too big. He was just, you know, small leg kicks here, um, a few front kicks to the body here and there. He landed a couple really, really solid turning side kicks to the body, which I didn't think he was going to do. I mean, turning your back in any way, shape, or form to Francis just does not seem like a good idea. But Siragon was landing some very, very solid, solid shots, and as the fight was going on, it was it was really looking like this is going to be one of those fights where Siragon is going to win a very easy decision where he just pity pats his way to a decision, and then. Francis Ngannou, out of nowhere, decides, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. But he didn't decide that by upping his offense with his punches or upping his offense with his kicks or becoming more dangerous. In fact, he was, get, he was getting tired. He was gassing. As the fight was progressing, we saw Francis Ngannou getting tired, breathing heavy, sweat pouring, his movement very labored, which we'll get to that in a sec. His hands uh, not moving as fast as they typically do. And so when somebody is tired, when someone is moving very labored like that, the last thing you would expect them to do is to try to take the fight to the ground. Now, it's one thing if the fight just happens to end on the ground and they happen to end up on top. But no, Francis Ngannou was pursuing takedowns against Sarah Gan. The first takedown he's, he landed was a insane slam. I, I don't even know if that has a name. He just he, he lifted the man up in the air and slammed them very, very heavily on his back. And I think that slam did so much to sap the energy of Sarah Gunn. If you've never been slammed on your back, you really don't understand how much energy that takes out of you. Like in the competition that I had in my very first competition, I got slammed. I was in full guard. My opponent's, uh, I was in full guard, locked my legs. My opponent picked me up and then he slammed me. Now you're not supposed to slam in jujitsu. It is um, illegal and you could get disqualified, but he did it in a very sneaky way. So I landed really, really hard on my back. I felt that even though it was on a, on a, on a mat, a padded mat, the, the force of you landing on your back, you, you feel the air get knocked out of you. It really takes a while to recover. So when I see a big, big slam like that from Francis, a huge slam, Francis is a big guy also coming right down on him. You could tell that it took a lot out of Siragon. But it didn't end there. We was, I, I was noticing some very good jujitsu. Well, I don't, don't want to say very good jujitsu. But better jujitsu than I thought I would see from Francis and Gunn. First of all, he had a very good cross face. The cross face is when you have shoulder pressure on the opponent's face. You can remember, wherever wherever your head goes, your body also goes. So if you have to shrimp to the left and turn your body to the right to recover your guard, and your opponent is putting shoulder pressure on your head and turning your head to the left. There is no way for your body to turn to the right for you to be able to recover guard. That is why a cross face is one of the most important things that you can do when you are on top in jujitsu. The cross face also allows you to flatten the opponent because if they're flat on their back and they're not on their side, the less mobility that they're going to have. 
So Francis was doing a very good job with his cross face. He would get in, in half guard cross face really well. And with that cross face and Saragon's head turned the other way, he was able to land some ground and pound. At some point, he was able to m maneuver his way to mount. And it really surprised me just how, I don't want to say how bad Siragon was off his back, but that's really the best way I can describe it. You know, he wasn't, he didn't, he didn't have a curl back, even though Francis was doing a pretty good job of, of keeping him flat and cross facing. There are a few things that he, he could have been doing on the ground, like getting the right frames, shrimping, bumping, recovering, uh, uh, pummeling the, the arm in to try to recover guard. There are a few things he could have been doing, but he really wasn't doing it. It could be because he was really, really tired. You know, he's in the middle of a fight again. Um, a lot of things that you do very well in the gym when you're in the heat of the of the moment, when you're in battle. A lot of things that you might do very well in the gym, you might not do those very well. So there's one there's one aspect of it. Um, but when I, when when that first happened when Francis first took him down I thought it was a one time thing like oh, okay you know he got this big takedown there is no way he's going to go back to that that must have taken a lot of energy he's going to no just gonna, no no he he went back to it round number 4 I believe he took him down again and round number 5 the championship rounds he was also able to take down Siragon and man Sira was really really tired and I'm like, geez, Louise, for a second ago, it looked like Francis Ngannou was the guy that was way more tired. Like, what is going on here? How are you this tired and still able to ground, to take a big, I mean, he was, he was hitting him with, with, with hip tosses, beautiful double leg takedowns as Siragon was trying to go for a Kimura. At one point, um, Siragon actually took down Francis Ngannou in round number five, and then he made a big, big mistake. He he had uh, Francis in the guard. He stood up and then uh, gave up top control to go for a leg lock. But, oh, my God. Which, of course, as you're going for a leg lock, it's not like jujitsu where you can take your time, get the ashigarami going, get the legs locked in properly, you know, isolate the limb that you want to crank on, take your time with it. It's not like jujitsu. In a in a real fight or in a mixed martial arts fight, the opponent can literally stand up, and when they stand up, they are allowed to rain blows down on you. And so when Francis Ngannou stood up, put on the boot like he was supposed to, um, so that he doesn't expose the uh, the ankle for the ankle lock. Um, Gan Siragan noticed that Francis had stood up, and so he let go of the ankle that he was trying to crank on. And so they're blocking his leg. But see, now he has given up top position, which is why dropping down to a leg lock when you have top position in a mixed martial arts setting, that's the, one of the, the few things that my professor in jiu-jitsu was screaming. He was like, you never, ever do that in a real fight. Like, we train jiu-jitsu here. We train sport jiu-jitsu, but we also train jiu-jitsu for self-defense. And there are a few things that you just don't do. You never ever give up top position when you have it in a real fight or an MMA. If you have top position, do not give it up going for a submission. Don't give it up going for a triangle. Don't give it up going. You maintain top position, especially if you're, if you're jujitsu and your submissions are not top, top, top tier. So watching Sirogan do that was like, oh my God. And of course, Francis was able to put weight on him, recover the legs, and he spent the rest of round number five on top, grinding out Siragon to win the fight. And then he wins the fight. All judges gave him the fight. Uh, when the fight started, I noticed that his uh, both both legs were wrapped up. He had he had uh, knee sleeves on, which of course uh, helps with stability of the knee. And I mean, why else would you need stability of the knee? Well, if your one reason is maybe you're going for leg locks a lot and you want some kind of friction, you want to be able to grab a hold of the leg and the sleeves will provide you with friction so the leg does not slip out. That's one reason. Francis Ngannou is not exactly a leg locker. So what could be the other reason why he would have knee sleeves on both both legs? Apparently, he uh, tore his legs to shreds. I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know the difference between your MCL or your ACL or whatever, but 
apparently he tore his shit up completely before the fight. And he was really considering pulling out of the fight, but he decided not to pull out of the fight. He showed up, fought a, a five-round championship fight where he was he was losing, he was getting tired, and he had the smarts and he had the intelligence to know he had to go to plan B. And with those knees busted up, he shot for takedowns, got takedowns, and he was able to ground this man and win a fight. And I find that to be absolutely impressive just really really impressive and one more wrinkle in the game of francis and gano see now we can't just say that francis and gano is a brawler or he's just a power puncher clearly the man has some grappling skill he has enough grappling skill to out grapple sarah Gan, who before the fight we all would have guessed is the better grappler am i right am i right i'm uh yeah, we would have all guessed that Siragon was the better grappler. But what this fight just showed is that maybe he's not. Maybe Francis Ngannou is a much better grappler than we could possibly imagine. Because if he's able to perform like that in the cage, in a fight, under the bright lights, while injured, while tired, what is his grappling like when he's fresh, not tired, in the gym, comfortable, he might actually have way better jujitsu. Because again, when I look at myself and I see how I perform like in a competition setting versus how I perform in the gym, it's night and day. It is night and day. In the gym, I'm, I'm like blue belt level blue belt level grappling. In the competition, we're talking like two-stripe white belt. It's crazy. Anyways, really impressive. Really, really impressive fight. Uh, really enjoyed every single last second of it. Another thing that comes up is I as I watch as I was watching the fight was I was thinking about John Jones. <laughs> I was thinking about John Jones, but you know what, man? We're going to leave the John Jones talk for another video because, um, you know, in the last in the last time I, I talked about John Jones, I was like, eh, and I'm done with John Jones, and I, I think I still am, but um, I'm not a very square person, like. I changed my mind from time to time, so we shall see. Still not sure yet. Still not sure. This watching this fight made me excited all over again for John Jones. So we'll see. We shall see what happens. We'll 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 talk about that later. Anyways, that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, go right ahead and leave a like. Let me know in the comment section what you guys thought about the fight, and I will talk to you guys later. As always, stay safe. Have a good night, boys.